The song in my place is really like a, a wayward child, you know. It, we really liked it when it was born, but we had real trouble with it through its adolescence, and, and it took a long time to really whip it into shape, you know. We, we had that song just after Parachutes was uh, finished, and really it was the song that kept us going and kept us together all, all through the touring of Parachutes because we could see that we had something to do and a lot of the record was written around it or the early part of the record, the new one. Um, but it, it was just a motherfucker to record. It was, I mean, I know, can you bleep that? <laughs> it, was, it was very difficult to record because, I don't know, maybe we had a lot of pressure on it because we've been playing it live for a long time and each of us probably had a different idea as to how it would end up sounding. And, I don't know, we, we can't listen to it now, so. It, it got to the stage where we uh, were quite fed up of it on, on several occasions, but um, we always believed in it, you know, we, we would always come back to it, you know. There was times when we'd have to leave it for a, a few weeks just to, just to get away from it. For a... We always believed it would be a top 300 single, <laughs> and so it was worth doing. No, we, it's a, it's a, a big tune for us, and. We never gave up on it, even after millions and millions of arguments. And if you want me to get technical, the hi hats were sounding funny, <laughs> and the bass and the strings wouldn't sit together. It's, it's very boring, but it, it it sounds okay now. With with any with any Coldplay song, you only pretend it's finished. I mean that's why we don't listen to our records after they're done. Because, for example, I was driving around in, in a, a friend's car and it came on the radio and, and I, I, all I hear is mistakes. All, all I hear is mistakes. Or, and if it comes on the TV, I have to switch over or, which is bad really, because you should be able to be proud of it. But all, all I hear is how we should have done it differently. If only we'd spent another hundred hours on it. <laughs> the song in my place, was the, it was the first thing we wrote after Parachutes and it was, it was the song we wrote really excited about and it and it and it gave us hope that we could write songs again at, after finishing and so and it and so it made us really want to record a second album because we wanted to record that and it made us write some more songs because we wanted to have some more songs for a second album so it, so it was a, it was it was our our doorway to doing you know another record because you know when you finish a record you know it's like when you finish a big meal or, or have an orgasm or something like that. You, you, you feel slightly drained or, or full. And anyway, you don't want to eat again or you don't want to do anything again. And uh, it's the same with records, I think. And you can't imagine how you're going to possibly do another record. And so this tune popped up and it was like a little island for us to get to. And, and by the time we came to record it, we had lots of other new songs as well. So. If we couldn't have got that song right, we wouldn't be talking to you. We'd be still 50 metres over the road trying to record it. We had to do it, that song. It, I'm a big fan of writing lists, you know, of our track, of our albums, while we're planning them, you know, and all the time we were in America last year, every day I'd write a new list of what the album would be, you know, blah, 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 10 songs or whatever. And the only song that's been on every list since the dawn of our lists for this record was, was in my place. And so to not put it on would have been weird. We, we didn't really have a set idea of how our new record would be. All we knew is that we were listening to a lot of different music and the new, new songs were kind of um, reflecting the way our tastes were changing, I think. We, we definitely didn't want to try and do the same thing again. No one has breakfast and then breakfast again. They have lunch, and we wanted lunch. At the same time, we didn't want to be contrived about um, pushing, pushing songs we had in directions that we didn't feel that they should go in. You know, we're still very much about arranging songs on, uh, by merit, you know, how, the, how they should be best represented. We, we did go through a period at the beginning of the record where we were convinced that we were in Limp Biscuit or, you know, What's that other one? Um, corn. Corn. Where we were just playing every single song really heavily just to see how they sounded and they did sound rubbish.
of some of them were these ballads and you turn up in the morning with a ballad and plug up your guitars to 11. It sounds awful. So we did go through a bit of a heavy rock phase, but we got out of it in time. Half the album was written when we actually went into the studio. Although we, we had, when we went in to record the album, we had um, we had had it planned out. You know, we had every single song, and, and we wanted to record it in two weeks because we thought, you know, we we could. We could. But um, after two weeks, we'd only done about half a bar of "In My Place." <laughs> so. Uh, so we, you know, we recorded those songs. Then we realised that, you know, some of them weren't really that good, and and uh, we wrote a few more. I think the place you record is very, very important. And on both records now, we've actually done it in four different places um, because you, you sort of go stale. It's the same with writing. You know, that all all the songs for both records have been written in really differing places and. This album is the first time that we've had internationally written songs, you know, from being on tour, and writing in Amsterdam and Sweden and America and Milan, and you know, it sounds like a sort of Formula One tour, but it, it's the same with recording. The different environment you're in inspires different things, and we started recording in London, which was which was good, but then I think we were kind of acting like rock stars a bit too much and not really concentrating on the music and just waking up and counting our awards and thinking oh we must we must be good because we you know we're in London and we've got our lovely houses and then we went to Liverpool to a really small inexpensive studio and we realized that we could do a lot better and that, that you know no amount of awards or fancy clothes or or people telling you that you're good none of that makes you good you have to sit down and actually get the music going and, and that's why it was great for us to be in Liverpool and Liverpool is a really inspiring place to be I, I find we find and uh, so we did lots of it there and then we came back to London and then we finished it in New York we, we, we totally believe in the in the idea that songs don't really come from you they sort of come to you come you know and often the songs that arrive the quickest that's why you want to record them properly because you can't believe that you've got them. Certainly, there's certain songs of ours that the reason we uh, spend so much time on finishing them is because they came so quickly that we, we sort of feel they're not really ours and we have to do the best by them. I know this sounds really stupid, but, it, but it's true, isn't it? We don't want to let the song down. Not when, it's not a difficult thing to throw songs away when you feel like you've got something much better. It's, it's very easy. It's when, it's when you think a song is quite good and you don't know whether working on it more will help it. It's, that's when it's difficult to, to let go. But they're the ones that become B-sides, I think. Yeah. Some, some songs are like us as people. You know, they're quite attractive and with a bit of a nose job and a, some you know, new hair or whatever, you can make them very attractive. Other songs are just really attractive from the beginning and other songs are just plain ugly. And it's just a question of how much you can make all of them look nice with a bit of makeup and lipstick. And some of our songs are very attractive and they get on the record straight away. Some of them are quite attractive and we give them a little bit of makeup, put them on the record. And others are ugly songs that we just ignore. Not, not, not ignore. What am I talking about? I've no idea. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that we, that we write a hell of a lot of terrible songs, but we will never, we'll never let anyone hear them. You Fuck you. <laughs> Let's go. No thoughts. Don't ask about the next record. It's like, if you, would you, when you, if you go up to a mother after she's given birth and say, hey, you fancy having another baby then? <laughs> they would scream at you. And, and that's how, a bit how we feel. We're still covered in musical placenta. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> thanks a lot. <laughs>